Hey guys, Ivan here, so in this video let's first talk about what happened last night at Tampa Bruin Open Division, Akim winning as you all probably heard already, Akim won the show and it was apparently very close between him and Kamal, Kamal took second and Quinton was third and it probably could have went either way. I was watching the live stream and I was pretty convinced that Akeem won, but after reading so many comments of you guys disagreeing with me, not just disagreeing, but asking me what I'm smoking for saying that Akeem won, that Kamal didn't win, I was not so sure what's gonna be the outcome, but I was pretty confident that Akeem is gonna win because he was simply much bigger. But you can make an argument that Kamal should have won, I guess I understand why you saw it that way, some of you, because of the details, and yes, Kamal had crazy details, especially in the back double bicep, there were so many lines, so many striations, it was ridiculous how defined, how conditioned and how detailed mainly this guy was at this show, but even though Akim was not very good in that sense, especially from the back, especially in the back double bicep, I still think he was a convincing winner because he was so much bigger. Kamal had a couple of glaring weaknesses, muscularity wise, and also Akim brought a good level of conditioning, he wasn't off, he was just as conditioned as he usually is, but when you are that big you won't really have the crazy details like the smaller guys have, like the classy guys or the 212 guys. And also, simply, mass plays a really big role in open bodybuilding, you guys can like it or dislike it, but that's the way the judging is done, as you can see. Details are awesome, conditioning is important, but what wins open pro shows is the size, is the completeness. And other than lats in the back double bicep, Akim really wasn't lacking much muscle, I mean, he was humongous everywhere. Glutes, hamstrings, quads, arms, shoulders, back, upper back thickness, chest to back thickness, traps, chest was insane. I mean, he was complete overall, really, really massive. This guy is a mass monster for sure, and he was in decent conditioning, which was plenty, more than enough for him to win this show. Those of you who thought Kamal is gonna win this show were probably influenced by what happened at Legion Sports Festival last year when Sean Clarida beat these two mass monsters, Regan Grimes and Sergio Oliva. Both of these guys are known for being bigger guys in bodybuilding. People who saw these guys in person, they say that Sergio and Regan are some of the biggest guys in the industry because they are taller and they also have a lot of muscle in their frames and Sean Clarida managed to beat them. Now, as you can see right here, Sean was bigger. He was more complete. Maybe his bone structure, maybe his frame wasn't as big, but what he had on that frame was more than the other two guys had on their frames. So you can say pound for pound, Sean Clarida was bigger. As you can see, his biceps were bigger and peakier, triceps probably the same thing, his lats were popping more, he probably had a smaller waist, also his quads were flaring more, especially compared to Sergio's legs and also to Regan's, also muscle maturity, details and all that stuff, conditioning is another thing, Sean was conditioned completely, he was peeled and also he was full, as full as he could have been without conditioning, so he was bursting full while being shredded, so he peaked perfectly for this show, these two guys, even though they were taller, they were not on and they were not bigger, for their frames, they need to fill up more and Sean Clarida is pretty much done, he basically has no flaws, no weaknesses. And I'm saying all this to Kamal's defense, these two guys, especially Akim, were not on the level that Sergio and Liva and Regan Grimes were on, Akim is a far better bodybuilder than these two guys, Akim is a top 6 Olympian, so if Kamal was facing those two guys like Sean Clarita did, you know, Regan Grimes and Sergio Oliva, I think Kamal would have won in that lineup, but not in this one. Also, yeah, Sean beat Kamal last two years in the 212, so you can say that Sean Clary is a better bodybuilder, but again, if Kamal competed against those guys in Legion Sports, he would have won that show, but if Sean Clarida competed here, he would have beaten Kamal, but would he beat Akim? I don't know, that's a good question, maybe, maybe not, it would be close, that's for sure, closer than Akim versus Kamal, because Kamal had some glaring weaknesses, now, considering that he is 51 years old, this is just incredible, this is insane the way he looked, but if you take a look at his glutes and his hamstrings, they kind of remind me of Guy Cisternino in his last show, where it was obvious that the age is taking the toll on his body, and I think the same thing is happening to Kamal, so his glutes
glutes kind of atrophied a little and also his hamstrings I don't know if he ever had really good glutes and hamstrings but he is a little bit behind in that department compared to Akeem and Quinton here both and probably to so many other guys in this uh, in this show also the back like he has really low inserted lats so low to the point where you cannot see the waistline you cannot really see the V taper and I think that's also hurting him and the way he was doing this uh, back uh, lat spread he was leaning backwards a little bit too much and the other thing from the front is for example chest take a look at Akeem's chest take a look at how thick his chest is compared to Kamal's when they do a front double bicep when they lift their arms that's when you can see the thickness of the chest and <laughs> Akeem's chest I mean Akeem is known for his chest he has around the thickest chest in the world basically in the history of bodybuilding his chest is so so big and also his chest to back thickness which you cannot really see in here in the poses but you can see it in the transitions when they are moving you can see just how thick Akeem actually is and also the legs look at how how sweepy how round Akeem's legs are I mean the outer sweep and the inner part the adductor part and uh, you know Kamal has a little bit flatter legs his legs are not that big not that round and simply the wee taper like uh, waist to shoulder ratio this really reminds me of uh, so many amateur shows that I watched when the heavy super heavyweight bodybuilder competes in the in the overall against uh, like the lightweight or the middleweight guy who are much smaller more detailed but just don't have that size and if the super heavyweight guy is conditioned enough he doesn't have to be super peeled if his conditioning is okay and he is dwarfing the the smaller guy like Akeem did here to Kamal that usually is enough for the bigger guy to win and uh, that's what happened here all right I also wanted to talk about Roman Fritz I don't know if you guys follow this guy too much I'm a big fan of Roman Fritz I follow him on social media I love the way he trains I love the way he is devoted to bodybuilding I love how hardworking he is he has an amazing personality but his physique didn't really showcase all that hard work I believe that he works very hard but he is one of those guys who do not have superior genetics who are not super blessed with crazy genetics for open bodybuilding but he just wants to do it because he loves it and I think he can do much better than he did at this show at Tampa Pro 2022 he was 11th uh, there was 14 guys in the lineup so he managed to beat three guys he beat the guys that I highlighted Dorian Haywood, Henry Jackson and Mark Arthur and out of those three Dorian Haywood is kind of an established name he's a good bodybuilder he competed at many pro shows I think he was in top five at New York pro last year something like that you guys correct me if I'm wrong remind me what was it but I think he, he he actually placed high a couple of times and as you can see he's a mass monster he's a big guy unlike Roman who is not really this big this thick and he was able to beat this guy yes Dorian Haywood was totally completely off that is true but I think Roman was off as well, big time. I don't think he's this bad. I think he's a much better bodybuilder than he showcased on this stage. Something went wrong. I have no idea what could it be. I watched his carb up on his Instagram stories. It was ridiculous. It was insane. He was eating so much, so much junk food. I posted a couple of uh, stories on one of my previous videos, but he ate so much more after that. Like he had a whole pizza, uh, I don't know, so much food. And I don't know if it was possible for him to be flat at this show. I don't know if that was possible, but he kind of looks flat to me. As you can see, his skin is, is, is hanging, it's not really stretched. I don't think he was full enough. Even though he ate probably like 50,000 calories in those two days, I don't think two days were enough. I think he should have carved up for like four or five days and not with just a bunch of junk food and what happens happens approach. I think he should have followed this more precisely, you know, a more controlled protocol so he can know what exactly happens. Because when you eat stuff like pizza, for example, how much sodium is there? There is no way of telling. You have no idea how much is in there. Basically, I think his approach during this peak week, the final week, wasn't very smart, it wasn't very good, and I think that is the reason that he didn't look as good as he could, and I think if he changes something for Texas next weekend, I think he can do much better, and he said that he's going to do it, and now he's gonna go to Ben Chow's 
house and the Ben Chow is a great coach actually he's coaching Hunter Labrada so if he's with Ben the entire week and Ben watches him and tries to help him the best way he can I think I believe Roman is gonna look much better at Texas but let's wait and see this video that you're watching is like a week before the Tampa and I think he looked much bigger much fuller much drier much more conditioned much harder than he did on the stage again yes he needs more mass he's not as massive as let's say Akeem or some of the other guys but he can make it up with conditioning Kamal was second at this show and he was not the biggest guy not by any means so if he can have crazy dryness crazy graininess and details and stuff like that Roman can do much better so I'm really expecting him to to improve or Texas I think one good peak week can change so much after the show was done Roman made a statement in which he kind of seemed disappointed but not really sad after the after the show that night he actually went to the gym and he trained and the next day he's gonna train again and he's gonna train the entire week with Ben Chow and I think he wants to improve I think he didn't lose his motivation I think he still loves what he's doing as he said and he wants to do better so let me show you what uh, he said about this uh, unfortunate outcome at the Tampa Pro quick statement to my showing earlier well turns out i'm a shit bodybuilder <laughs> yeah that's the the tough reality to swallow i'm just the, a shit bodybuilder i know it so still gonna do texas next week of course because i still love this shit although i'm not very good at it. I still enjoy it. So Texas next week, and I'll fly back home to Germany and see what happens after that. Right now, I am, <clears throat> obviously I drank a whole lot and see what the evening. All right, guys, I said, I'll show you what the evening brings. And I found a fucking 24 hour gym. EOS Fitness and they let me in for a day pass and now right after the show I'm gonna get a workout in probably gonna do chest and then legs tomorrow with my man Ben Chow in good old Texas all right guys I'm back at the Airbnb I, I trained as you saw did some chest shoulders and of course calves I think calves is the only body part I have actually <laughs> and I'm gonna eat something now <laughs> as funny as it might sound I got a salad in a restaurant a salad to go with grilled chicken breast because I've eaten so much junk food I really crave something green and non-fatty and non-sugary and I'm gonna, I'm gonna pack and leave for Texas tomorrow to meet with Ben in his house and do the last week before the Texas show that's the game plan so yeah you heard it guys I don't know I feel really sorry for Roman but I gotta say I think he didn't really bring his absolute best here I think he was bigger and better before in some previous shows previous years yeah his upper body definitely needs to be bigger and fuller that's for sure but 11th place at Tampa, I don't think that really tells us the whole truth I think he's going to be much better at Texas with the Ben Chow's help I think he's going to do better we'll see if he manages to carb up properly and comes in bigger, fuller, a little bit bigger and fuller, and if he brings the condition that he is known for, he can do better. Look at him here. I mean, he isn't really that bad of a bodybuilder. I honestly believe that he can improve for Texas, but as far as his entire career, the rest of his career, I think the biggest change, the smartest thing that he can do for his career is stop doing this thing alone. He has no coach, but I think if he had a good coach, he would probably do much better that's just my opinion if you guys agree tell me in the comment section down below and also tell me what do you think can he improve enough to place higher than 11th at least like to be in I don't know top six is probably too much but let's say can he crack the top six if he does something better if do you think it was a peak week mistake 
That's the question for you. What do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below. All right, the next thing I wanted to talk about is a little bit off topic. It's about William Bonek, who is kind of in his off season, not really off season. He probably started prepping slowly for the Mr. Olympia. There are 20 weeks until the Mr. Olympia. But I gotta say, William Bonek probably looks bigger than ever in his career. Take a look at these freaking arms right here and also the chest thickness, the lat thickness. He looks so huge right now. Take a look at this photo also, for example. Look at the calves, look at the shoulders, the chest, the arms, and overall, like, the, the thickness of this guy. Like, you can see the neck, the traps, and, you know, the, the, the density of this entire body. He grew, man. This guy improved. And you saw him at the Arnold. He deserved that victory. He was the best bodybuilder on the stage, minus the gyno that he fixed. He had a surgery. So this year, if he brings his absolute best, and if Brandon brings what he usually brings... I see William Bonek beating him finally this year. And then who else is left? Brandon was second last year. And of course, there is Hardy who can switch places with Brandon. There are Nick Walker and Hunter Labrada knocking at the door. And also there is uh, Andrew Jack who might win the Mr. Olympia this year. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding, of course. There are maybe like five, six guys who can really challenge William Bonek. And on any given day, I think Bonek can beat them all, including Big Ramy. So I honestly don't think it is impossible to see William Bonek win the Mr. Olympia this year. What do you guys think? Make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And for more bodybuilding stuff like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.